Hey, what's going on everybody? This video, I thought I'd switch things up and talk about the switch statement. <laughs> oh, see what I did there? Oh boy, man, I'm funny. All right, this video is sponsored by Monday.com. Monday.com is your visual project management solution. This is the tool that allows you to see where every task or project stands with a single glance. With a fully customizable interface, you can create the exact workflow that you need for you and your team to get stuff done. Monday.com is available on mobile and integrates well with some of the most popular tools out there. So get your life in order by giving it a try for free. Link in the description. Now let's get back to what we were talking about. Switch statements are very similar to if statements with a few differences. So the syntax is this. You put switch, parentheses, and then curly braces. Inside of the switch parentheses, you put the name of a variable. So we could do something like string name, and we'll set that equal to Caleb. And you could get this value from user input and that would make more sense, but we're just gonna hard code it right there. And then what we do is we put name right here. Then what you can do is you can say, hey, if the name is equal to Caleb, do this. If it's equal to something else, do this. And the way you do that is with cases. So you can say case and we'll say Caleb and you put a colon. Here's what happens if it's Caleb. Well, one thing you need for every single case is the break statement. And we're gonna talk about what that means in just a second. Now between the case label and the break statement is where you put your code. So for example, we can do console.writeLine, and then we can have a different case if you're someone else. So we can say case Claire console.writeLine. And in here we're gonna say, hmm, I don't know, some kind of nice. And don't forget that break statement. What the break statement does is it actually prevents the execution from falling through to the next statement. So in C sharp, it's actually a required thing. So if I put a comment here, it's actually an error. It's not going to let you compile. Other languages, it's not an error, but it's really still basically required for things to work the way they're supposed to. In those cases, it would execute, you are so legit, and then it would automatically come down here and execute this one as well. Even if your name was Caleb and not Claire, it would execute both. So the break statement fixed that problem. So for other languages, you would expect to see this break statement here as well, and C Sharp keeps that consistent. So you need a break for every case. And then lastly, you can have a default case, and it looks like default. And you still need a break for that one as well, like so. And now let's give it a try. And you can see it says you are so legit. Me, not you guys. If it was you guys, it might be something like this. And when you run it, you get who are you. So basically we could ask the user what their name is and then we could case on what that value is. If it's a case where you don't wanna give access, what you can do is you can actually say return. And what this is going to do is it's actually going to break from this main method. The return statement always goes outside of whatever method you're in. And because main is the main function, the main method, it's going to stop the program. The only way this is going to make a difference is if you have other code down here. So for example, we wanna give access to everybody. Well, let's try it with Claire and see what happens. You can see it tells her to go away, but then this welcome is never executed. If we try it with someone else, it says welcome. Use the return instead of the break, yes. So you don't need both the return and the break, you just need one or the other. So now you should be able to compile without any warnings. So that is the switch statement. The main differences between the if statement is that the switch statement is ideal for a few values whereas the if statement can use comparison operators, logical operators, you can make much more complex conditionals. Switch is very basic, like, hey, your name's Caleb, Claire, or something else. When you have a few options, it's much clearer to use a switch statement, in my opinion, and I would recommend it. So for example, if you're making a menu where someone clicks one through four, it'd be nice to have case one, case two, case three, case four. Which, by the way, you can use integers, you don't have to use strings. In fact, some languages don't even let you use strings, so let's just show you what that might look like. It might look like case three, case five, and default. If you want something to happen for both cases, well, you can actually get rid of the stuff in between, and that's the only situation where not having that break is okay. Basically, if it's three or five, this is going to happen. And that basically sums up everything you need to know about the switch statement. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. I think we're gonna be talking about the ternary operator. Assuming I don't change my mind in the next uh, couple minutes, so we'll see. <laughs> I'll see you then.